Floating in the Sea of Cortez, off the coast of Mexico, is the research vessel Atlantis, the mothership for the exploration of one of the most alien worlds we know. But it's an alien world on our planet. The Atlantis is the launch vessel for Alvin, one of the world's most rugged submarines. Built like a spacecraft, it's designed to explore the deepest depths of the ocean. And I'm lucky enough to have hitched a ride down to the sea floor, two kilometers beneath the surface. <laughs> it's honestly got to be the closest thing to going into space that you can do. And given that I'm not going to go into space anytime soon, I think this is the next best thing. See you in eight hours. Starboard time! Parallels to spaceflight are obvious. As the tiny capsule descends, we're leaving the familiar world of the surface of our planet and entering a strange, hostile world. If anything goes wrong, we will be completely on our own. It's very rare that you get to do something so challenging and so alien. You know, to be taken to that environment in, in the very deep ocean, it's strange and silent and unusual. And it's tiny as well. Um, so there's th three people crammed into this little uh, titanium ball, which kind of creaks a bit <laughs> as it goes down. Sleeping's never good. At the Earth's surface, we're used to one atmosphere of pressure. As we descend, the pressure increases by another atmosphere every 10 metres, and it soon adds up. So we're just approaching a kilometre deep. The pressure outside there is now, what, 100 atmospheres? That's higher than the atmospheric pressure on the surface of Venus. Without knowing, if you were asked the question, could life exist down here, 100 atmospheres, the cold, dark, no sign of sunlight at all, it's pitch black there, you would say no. Well, I would say no. For me, the fascinating thing about finding life down here is that the conditions on the deep ocean floor are more similar in many ways to the conditions on worlds hundreds of millions of kilometers away out there in the solar system than they are to the conditions just two kilometers above my head on the Earth's surface. You know, it's incredibly dark, there's no sunlight, there's a brutal mixture of hot and cold water and just, well, rock and minerals. So if life can not only survive, but even flourish in these conditions, then you've got to feel that it's much more likely that life can also survive and flourish out there in the solar system. One of the main benefits, I think, in looking at life in extreme environments on Earth, so-called extremophiles, is that you get a wider view of what life is and what chemical elements or compounds it produces. And that is useful because really, if you think about life subsurface on Mars, for example, if it exists, we really don't know how that life would behave. 